Have you ever wondered how pilots navigate when they have no outside visual reference? Ever wondered how they find the runway when they are enveloped in thick clouds with no visibility? This video will show how to land an airplane in zero visibility conditions using nothing but flight instruments on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. We will shoot an ILS approach and try to find the runway when we can't see it using just our flight instruments. Okay guys, um, in this video we're going to be planning a little IFR flight from Hermiston Municipal Airport in Hermiston, Oregon up to Pasco, uh, Tri-Cities um, in southeastern Washington. Short little flight today, about uh, 31 minutes um, estimated time and route. Um, so we plan this flight. We're going to be flying, cleared to fly on the Victor 298 Airway. Flying out from Hermiston, um, going to intercept the first uh, waypoint there of OLODE and then fly up to the waypoint of uh, Ginley and then uh, Golf Alpha Whiskey Whiskey Yankee and then uh, fly up to PSC um, and then we will um, fly uh, intercept uh, the, we're going to shoot the ILS approach into runway 2 on right. Um, so we'll fly out to the initial fix at Jivdo and then, uh, yeah, uh, make the uh, procedure turn and then uh, make the make the final approach, um, attempt to shoot the ILS approach on this one. Um, so we plan this out. Um, we'll fly this in the simulator here today. All right, so we'll jump into the simulator here. This is the Garmin G1000 electronic flight display. First thing we're going to do in the upper left hand corner is tune our uh, localizer frequency for the uh, ILS into runway 21 right which is 108.7 and then uh, the second thing you see there is the um, the VOR um, for the uh, PASCO VOR frequency 113.75. Um, we'll tune this. We've loaded the flight plan uh, into the G1000 so you can see there at the bottom, we're clicking the uh, the DME um, to the first waypoint of OLODE, which is about 11.6 nautical miles from uh, Hermiston. We're currently at Hermiston Municipal. Uh, I'm going to fly up a little short flight to uh, Pasco. And then what we'll do from here is we'll, um, you can see there, um, we're going to tune our barometric pressure. So the altimeter is 29 or 5 We'll uh, tune that in there, um, and then you can see the flight plan right there. We'll zoom in. First waypoint is OLODE, and then uh, what you can see is we've got the whole flight plan loaded in there. So after OLODE, we'll be flying on that Victor 298 airway uh, to Jinli, and then to uh, our next waypoint, and then we'll shoot the ILS into runway 21 right. Um, We've got the initial fix there, um, and then we've got our missed approach point if needed. Um, we've got the holding pattern set if we need to. Um, we can go ahead and click that flight display, this FPL there on the right side um, to exit. And then we'll tune the CDI there. You can toggle the CDI uh, between the GPS approach course um, and then the localizer and the VOR. So um, this yeah, this G1000 is just a great, um, great technology. Um, it's got a lot of great features for pilots. Um, so you can see here we're in low visibility. Um, it's, it's it's about a half mile visibility here at Hermiston Municipal, um, and so we're we're gonna uh, do our pre-flight checks and then get ready to depart here. You can see up the upper left-hand corner um, the DME. It's about 11.6 nautical miles to that first uh, waypoint of OL. ODE. And so, um, yeah, we're getting ready. We'll do our pre flight checks here um, and then get ready to depart. Um, you can also see in the upper uh, upper part of the screen there in the Garmin G1000, um, this is uh, Kilo Hotel Romeo India is the airport identifier for Hermiston. And then we'll go um, to that first waypoint there on the uh, Victor 298 Airway to OLODE uh, on a heading of uh, 065. 
So we'll start our run up here, get ready to take off. Trying to stay centered there on the center line. Making sure to use our rudders there. And then we will go ahead and lift off once we rotation speed for the Cessna 172, which is what we're flying today, is about 55 knots. So we go ahead and uh, depart here. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we're, we're maintaining, trying to maintain our best uh, climb speed here. And uh, we'll go ahead and depart. As you can see, guys, from the video, I mean, it's uh, we're in straight IMC conditions right when we took off. We're in the soup already. Um, so obviously really important to just, we're just flying on purely on our instruments today. So as you can see too, we're, we're, um, in the, in the main, uh, CDI there, we're, uh, we're a little left of course right now. So we're going to, um, get back on the, uh, on our flight path, uh, flying towards that needle there. Uh, and you can see on the right side in the right flight display, um, that's our uh, GPS course there, which is displayed in magenta. So we're on a heading of about 079. Um, should be intercepting um, intercepting our intended course here in a, just a couple minutes. And you can see too up in the upper left-hand corner, um, we're about you know, 8.7 nautical miles from OLODE uh, and about 26 nautical miles from the uh, PASCO VOR. Again, maintaining a heading of about 078 right now. And we're also uh, maintaining our ascent rate of about 700 uh, feet per minute. So we're maintaining our cruise speed about 100 Indicated airspeed is about 100 knots right now, and we are right on the uh, right on the center line of our um, intended course here, and back on our approach on our um, heading of about 065 right now. A little to the right of course now, so we're gonna you know fly back a little to the left again. Just small minor adjustments here um, to maintain our desired um, ground track. Getting closer now, about five nautical miles from OLODE, uh, climbing up to our altitude of about 4,000 feet. Currently at about uh, 3,600, climbing through 3,600 for 4,000. And you can see that from the bottom there, it says DME. DME is distance measuring equipment. Um, it will tell you your um, distance from you know, a desired uh, point like a VOR, something like that. And you can see in the right, uh, the right flight display there on the right side, um, you can see OLODE. Once we hit OLODE, um, our first waypoint, um, we're going to make a, a left turn there. Um, so we've, uh, we've hit our altitude about 4,100 feet, about 100 feet above our assigned altitude for the flight. So we'll just maintain this right here, trying to maintain uh, level attitude. And then once we um, hit OLODE, we're going to make a, a left turn. About two nautical miles there from, uh, from the OLODE waypoint. At Pasco, uh, at the Pasco Airport in Tri Cities, there uh, the the flight visibility was about a half mile. So we're going to try to shoot this approach in almost near zero zero conditions. So stay tuned um, for later when we try to attempt to shoot this approach into you know near zero visibility, which is um, it's just above um, the minimum uh, visibility requirement for this approach is uh, 2,400 feet, which is just under a you know half mile. So you can see our GPS approach course um, turns left there. So we'll go ahead and make a, a left turn here. And just maintaining our airspeed, main, trying to maintain our altitude here. And then, 
yeah, just maintaining that our altitude, our target altitude, assigned altitude is about 4,000 feet. Uh, our t altimeter is 29 or 9 or 5. And haven't gotten a, uh, different instructions on that, so we're good there. And then we'll go ahead and um, intercept our uh, course here. We're going to try to maintain a heading of about 335, flying up the Victor 298 airway here until we get to uh, to the Pasco uh, VOR, which is about, you can see on the upper left-hand corner of the screen, about 23.6 nautical miles. And then our next waypoint is uh, Jinli, Gulf, India, November, Lima Echo, uh, about eight nautical miles from that point. And then again, we would have this in our nav log, um, which is loaded in, in this, um, you know, it's loaded into the into the uh, G1000. We'll go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Um, and again, you can see if we look at our FPL button there, so Jin Lee is about 7.5 nautical miles on a heading of 333. And then we'll uh, hit Gowie, which is Golf Alpha Whiskey Whiskey Yankee, which is about 1.1 nautical miles after uh, Jin Lee. And then we've got the ILS uh, programmed into runway 2 and right here. So we'll go ahead and click that uh, FPL button there to the bottom right hand of the uh, G1000 to exit out of that. So we're right, right about on course here, um, right about on our target path um, of headings about 333 and almost six nautical miles now from the uh, Jin Lee waypoint. You can see that in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You can also see it there at the bottom of the G1000. Um, it's about six nautical miles. And then we're about uh, 21 nautical miles from the uh, Pasco VOR. And then once we hit that Pasco, once we fly over the Pasco VOR, we'll uh, fly our outbound track um, and then make the turn to intercept the uh, localizer um, for the ILS into runway 21 right. We're a little below our altitude here. Uh, we're going to try to ascend a little bit, um, get above that, uh, our minimum altitude of 4,000 feet. So we're going to climb about 500 feet per minute here to get back up um, to our altitude, um, our target altitude of 4,000 feet. Air, indicated airspeed is about 97 knots right now. Another thing on this G1000, you can see at the upper right-hand corner is our comm frequencies. So um, whatever that the frequencies that you're assigned by ETC, you'll just plug those in um, to the to the G1000, um, and then toggle between the active uh, and the standby frequency. What you would do is just uh, program uh, the desired frequencies there uh, in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. It's a cold day today. You can see in the bottom left-hand uh, corner of the G1000, outside air temperatures negative one degree Celsius, which is roughly 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're about 4,000 feet right now. You can see on the right side, um, we're you know right about on track. We're a little bit to the left, of course, but you can see Jinli there, our first waypoint, which is about uh, two two and a half miles nautical miles away right now. And then you can see there at the bottom of the, uh, the 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 airspeed indicator that our true it says TAS 109. That's our true airspeed. It's about 108 knots. Again, just trying to maintain level flight attitude here. Uh, and you can see in the bottom of the uh, G1000 there, uh, it says XPDR5511. Uh, That's the transponder code. So if you were flying VFR, um, the squawk VFR code is uh, 1200. And then, you know, you know whatever um, assigned transponder code you were given by ATC, you just plug it in uh, there and it would display um, there to the bottom of the, uh, the G1000. So again, we can pull up our flight plan there. Um, we can see that the ILS into 2 one right. We're going to intercept the initial uh, approach fix at Jivdo. And then uh, 
we make our procedure turn and then uh, the initial fix at uh, Zalux. And then that uh, little knob to the bottom right is how you uh, toggle. Uh, you can change this um, by just uh, using, the, using the knob to uh, twist between the, the different um, the different waypoints and then you can change that as well. So you can see there, like if we want to remove a procedure turn, we could, you know, click that and then, you know, click OK or click cancel. In this case, we're not going to change that, so we'll click cancel. And then there's that ENT button, which is enter, which is how you select the desired waypoint on that. So we're back up to our uh, minimum and root altitude, about 4,060 feet right now. So we're just um, we're just maintaining our desired track, about 10 nautical miles from uh, from the Pasco VOR. We were just informed from. ATC to contact Spokane approach on 133.15. Uh, so we've got that programmed into the uh, first communication frequency. And uh, we just contacted Spokane approach to give them our, um, our altitude of 4,000 um, 4, feet roughly. Um, and then they just updated us with the uh, latest altimeter frequency, which is um, 29.95 as the altimeter setting, rather. And as you can see there, and the, the one cool thing about the G1000 is it's, you know, you can see the topography there um, in the flight display. So about to cross over the, uh, the Columbia River here. And so we'll just uh, stay on this uh, course until we'll, uh, till the, we hit the Pasco VOR, which is about six nautical miles away. So we're just maintaining level flight attitude here. Airspeed looks pretty good. Um, we'll pull up the flight plan again to see that um, once we hit that Pasco VOR, we'll we'll go to the Jivdo um, initial approach fix. So you can see that once we hit the uh, Pasco VOR, um, we'll make a right turn um, to the outbound course. Um, of the ILS, the, the, the approach course uh, for the ILS um, into runway 21 right here at the Tri-Cities Airport is 211. So um, the 180 degree reciprocal of that um, would be a 031. So we'll, um, once we hit this VOR, we'll make a right turn um, on a heading of 031, and then we'll make our procedure turn out there. So you can see um, in the right, uh, part of the flight display there that uh, we can see the Tri-Cities um, airport um, and then we'll, once we'll once we fly over that we'll go ahead and uh, make that right uh, turn um, to intercept the outbound course for the ILS approach and then what we just did there was we changed the DME um, so now we can pick up the uh, the localizer which is India Pasco Sierra Charlie IPSC so that'll tell us how far we are away from the uh, from the localizer and then um, when we pull up the plan uh, the profile view on the um, approach plate that'll tell us the DME will tell us at the uh, how far we are away uh, from the localizer um, at the at the different um, fixes on the approach. So you can see there, um, we're about to fly over the airport right now. So we'll toggle so to pick up the localizer there, and then we can toggle to the VOR. We'll then, um, just to show you, the we'll toggle to the VOR, which is tuned to the uh, Pascal VOR. You can see up upper left-hand corner, 113.75 is the frequency. We're going to tune the course here to... Uh, 31 degrees to intercept that uh, outbound course there, which again is the 180 degree reciprocal of the final approach course um, into the uh, the ILS to 21 right, which is 211. So 031 is the uh, the 180 degree reciprocal of that. 
a little below our signed altitude here, so we we were uh, just told by ATC that we're 300 feet below our assi assigned altitude, so we're we're climbing up to um, climbing back up to 4,000. And you can see that once we cross this, the, 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 in the uh, HSI, um, in the middle, um, you can see the VOR um, needles. That VOR course will start to, the needle will start to move very quickly here um, in just a minute. We'll go ahead and um, turn to a heading of 031. Get on this turn, trying to make a smooth turn, maintaining altitude, airspeed. And then we'll, uh, we're going to fly heading a little to the right, of course. Uh, we'll level off here at about, yeah, heading about 051 just to intercept the, 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 uh, the, our outbound course. You can see it's displayed there, uh, the magenta line is our GPS track and then we'll uh, we'll fly back to keep that VOR needle centered here maintaining airspeed, true airspeed is about uh, 108 knots right now just keeping the level of flight attitude again a little bit below um, our assigned altitude so we're gonna fly up here to uh, to get back on our assigned altitude just about 4,000 feet and you can see on the upper left hand corner we're now about three nautical miles from the localizer um, which is IPSC and the NAV1 frequency and then um, we're about two nautical miles from the uh, PASCO VOR which is in our uh, NAV2 frequency. And then we'll pull up the approach plate here. You can see that um, our initial fix where we'll intercept that localizer is at Jivdo, which is uh, 7.4 nautical miles from the, uh, the localizer at uh, PSC. And then our... Uh, our course there of 031, trying to maintain that, and then we'll uh, we'll make our uh, 180 degree turn to intercept the final approach course of 211 for this ILS into uh, runway 21 right. So we're about on our, our desired track here, um, just maintaining our level flight attitude. Okay, we were just told by ATC to descend and maintain 3,200 feet. So after we make our uh, procedure turn, we'll go, ahead and, we'll go ahead and start our descent to uh, about 3,200 feet here. Again, just usually, you know, between four or 500 uh, feet per minute. So we're going to go ahead and descend. Our airspeed's coming up as we start to descend. So we'll take a little, we'll decrease uh, power a little bit here so our airspeed doesn't get too high. And we'll descend down to our assigned altitude, try to maintain around 3,200 feet. And then you can see there at the Jibdo initial approach fix, we'll make our uh, procedure turn. See on the approach plate, the uh, make the left turn um, for our procedure turn on a course of about 346 so that's our heading right now it's 346 and then we'll uh, we'll fly back inbound at the at the, uh, the after making the 180 degree turn um, the course is about 166 so once we've made our procedure turn um, you can see the localizer comes alive and uh, now we'll just try to stay centered here on the localizer needle once we um, level off around our final approach course of 211. Drifting a little to the left, so we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and fly back to the right um, towards the needle to get back on course here.
You can see the green diamond, the glide slope, uh, our, our, our glide path. Um, green diamond's about centered, so we're about on the right uh, glide path here. And then we are uh, we are about 8.6 uh, nautical miles, so, so uh, 8.5 nautical miles now from the localizer. Um, so about a mile away from uh, from the initial approach fix of Jivdo. Our minimum altitude there is going to be 2,400 feet. So we're going to start our descent now. We're about uh, 2,840 feet right now. So we're going to um, go ahead and uh, start our descent down um, probably around. 2,400, 2,500, kind of in that uh, range. And right now we are about uh, we're about at the at the initial approach fix of Jibdo. So again, about uh, we're about seven uh, nautical miles. From the localizer, we're gonna fly back to the right towards the needle again, just trying to keep that uh, localizer needle centered. We're a little above the glide slope right now um, because the uh, green diamond is um, below the center line. So we'll go ahead and increase our uh, descent rate a little bit. You know, maintaining about 650 feet per minute right now, down to 700 feet per minute. We're coming in a little fast right now, um, so we're going to decrease our power just to keep, uh, just to, yeah, just so we don't come in too fast on this approach. So we'll reduce power here. Again, as we descend, our, our airspeed is going to come up a little bit, so we've got to decrease power. The initial fix of uh, G-ROG, which is J-E-R-O-G, is about 3.9 nautical miles um, from the localizer. So we're uh, we're coming up on G-ROG here. Again, above the glide slope right now. Still can't see the runway. And our minimum uh, descent altitude for this approach is 603 feet, which would give us our decision height, which is about 200 feet above the, uh, the touchdown zone elevation, which in this case is 403 feet. So we're going to uh, make sure we don't descend below the minimum descent altitude of 603 feet until we can see the, the, the runway, until we have visual side of the runway. So we've, we've uh, decreased our airspeed here. Um, again, a little bit to the left, of course. We're going to fly back to the right towards the needle. See, this, see how the localizer needle comes centered as we fly back towards the right? We're uh, decreased our airspeed to about 75 knots. We're a little above the glide path. We're at about 720 feet. Still can't quite see the runway. So we'll, if we can't see it, um, we'll have to go mist. But And then almost there... You guys can't quite see it, but just got a uh, visual uh, of the runway. So we can go ahead and descend down um, right as we were about at the, uh, the minimum descent altitude. So um, we'll go ahead and descend. You guys can't quite see it. You'll see it here in just a minute. Um, we're at about 56 knots now, just before a touchdown. And there you see the runway lights. Um, and runway to one right. All right, and we uh, just uh, just landed here at uh, Tri Cities Airport in Pasco, Washington. And then we uh, we got our taxi instructions from ATC. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn left here on the next uh, taxiway.
All right, and we uh, we'll go ahead and taxi uh, taxi back to the ramp here, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe um, for more flight training and aviation related um, educational videos.